Hi everybody, it's me Foxy D and uh, the video about toxic masculinity is coming up as promised. But prior to this video, I have to share a little something with you and a good bit of advice. And again, I'm not trying to guide anybody because I think I'm some kind of workplace mobbing guru. I'm just a human <laughs> who's gone through some interesting experiences and know a lot about this topic. So as you recall, I've been mobbed three times and this third time, rather than put my head down and not look anyone in the eye and kind of cower in the presence of my mobbers, I decided to stand up to them. So the good part of the story was this, the moment I perfected my death stare and the moment that I started looking people in the eye and smirking at them, kind of owning the situation, but just showing that I was unbeatable. Uh, it definitely angered a lot of people, but it scared a lot of them too. And with the women, it scared the great part of them into submission. All right, they got more manipulative in different ways, but I wasn't dealing with the stare downs and, uh, you know, I would pass people. And of course I used to say hi and a lot of them wouldn't answer me. So I stopped saying hello. And then I started doing the stare downs right back and they were in groups and I was alone. And when they were alone and we were one-on-one, -on -one, it was really interesting because they would put their heads down. They were very uncomfortable. So you have to really find your power place, that voice of power. Okay. And I'm going to post some links to this great video about communication and finding that power voice. So your voice and your nonverbal communication, it's very important. Stand back and face your fears. If you're expecting certain behaviors and believe me, you will expect them because you'll see behaviors are patterns, right? A one-off is not a mobbing. <laughs> All right. A one-off could be somebody having a bad day. But we're talking about repeated behaviors. So when you get a gaggle of women, and I'll only address the women right now, but the men are coming, believe me. Uh, when you get a group of women trying to intimidate you, taking advantage of our natural human desire for acceptance into the group, well, and you're going to be the outsider? Own the fact that you're the outsider. You show them who's boss. Don't back down. Don't put your eyes down. Stare. Okay? If they say things like, ah, like one of them passing in the hall, <laughs> you're not so smiling anymore these days. And I was humming a tune and I just kept humming and looked at her, looked at her like this, looked her up and down. And as I walked by, I looked back at her. It freaked her right out. <laughs> I can tell you. I found my place. I had practiced it. Now at the beginning, when you start engaging in those behaviors, it might seem alien and foreign to you. Especially for me, like I said, it had been a number of years. I just kept putting my head down until I was just like this little piece of nothing. All right. Um, just, and it honestly, it shook me to my core. I started lacking confidence in myself. You don't want that. So the beauty of standing up, I did prove something for myself. And I feel bigger and badder than ever. But when it comes to the badder part, yeah, there is another bad part, which is chronic back pain. Okay. I had to prove this to myself, so I stayed in this last mobbing way too long. All right? Um, so this is my advice to you. The moment you know you're getting mobbed, if you can afford to get out of there or get a sick leave, if you have paid sick leave, get thyself out of the situation as soon as possible. Remember, mobbing is time and place specific. All right? And has a lot less to do with you. You know, it's not like you did anything wrong, you know, or maybe you offended person without meaning to. Well, it means you're dealing with narcissistic people. Thanks, Max 2020. I don't mention narcissism enough, but usually the core of the mobbing group is a narcissistic or a couple of narcissistic individuals that are looking to climb the ladder on your back. All right. Victims or targets of mobbing tend to be very good at their jobs and they're a threat to the person who's incited the mobbing in some way, shape or form. So yeah, don't put your head down, keep your head up. All right. And I'm not saying to do things to make you a target, like to, you know, randomly insult somebody, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that you have to put a stop to whatever the behavior is, but the behaviors are predictable. So it's almost like you have to invest a little time practicing what 
your power stance is, practicing your voice, practicing the stare down, practicing smirking when somebody's looking at you with hate, right? Feel it. Go into the core. Go in. And whatever you're going to manifest on the outside is, uh, you know, as long as you're mentally stable, should be okay. And if you're not mentally stable, get out of the situation so you gain a degree of stability. Do not stay. No amount of money is worth it. Okay? So I said I stayed too long. I'll tell you why. Now, I staved off the women's mobbing. It mostly stopped. It took maybe a month, a month and a half for them to get the message. Okay? Uh, one of them, actually, who kept not saying hello to me when I was saying hi to her, so I stopped saying hi. That was the first step. You know, took me a while to perfect the power stairs, so it took a little time. She ends up showing up at my office door one day with this smirk on her face saying, you don't seem as happy as you used to. Now I was prepared for something from her because it was getting worse and worse in the halls whenever I'd pass her. She'd make faces with her friend, right, and roll her eyes. So I said, okay, they're going to push further because that's what people do. They'll keep pushing to see what your breaking point is. So she was at my office door leaning in saying, oh, you're not as smiley as you used to be. What's going on? So I looked, sat in my chair, nice and tall, stared, said, oh, I go, yeah, I'm good. I go, this is a place of work. Guess what I do? I do my work, right? And I suggest you do the same. You're paid to work. Isn't that correct? She looked in, and she was surprised and I just stopped. I didn't engage any further. I just looked at her. People are uncomfortable with silence. Just a human thing. So now she starts, uh, well, I, I don't really like to work. And that's when I smirked and I said, well, that shows. And I smiled. And remember, this is a union member, right? Uh, yeah, well, uh, anyways, yeah, well, yeah, cute. Uh, she mentioned something that was on my desk. Oh, that's really cute. Yeah. Well, I'll see you later. And she gave me this awful look, like a stare, like an evil glare. And I just smiled comfortably, made myself as big as possible, the back of my chair facing her directly. Okay. She left. She tried again in the hall. I'm walking by. That's when she did the comment and I kept humming my tune and looked at her. And by that point, she knew what was going on. Who started saying hi to who in the hall afterwards? She started saying hello to me because I would just give her the death stare. Or I'd look at her and I'd just keep walking. And I'd say, bonjour, hello, to all my colleagues. And I'd just look at her. And she would say, bonjour. Yeah, bonjour. Right? So the women were easy to deal with the moment that I met force with an equal amount of force. The men, however, took them a longer time to get the message. I'll wrap it up for now before I do the toxic masculinity one. For me, the men I thought would get the message as well. Now, they were pretty cowardly, and uh, mostly they got the message, but a couple of them couldn't take the message. They couldn't let a woman win. This is where that whole male-female thing comes in that I can't stand, that division, and this is where the link to toxic femininity and toxic masculinity comes in, and I will address that. So I had a man come into the office all bravado-y and full of piss and vinegar, and he was standing maybe a foot away from me. He just waltzed into my office, standing there. Remember, he's above me looking down on me. He's a big, strong man. I'm a little lady, but I'm pretty strong. So he looks and he goes, hey, you got a problem with me? So that's when I calmly did the same thing, made myself big, looked at him right, right in the eye, and I didn't say a word. I just pulled one of these, looked at him dead in the eye, pulled one of these. So he backed up. He understood very clearly. And I calmly said, you got a problem with me? Send me an email. And the conversation stopped dead right there. So he takes off. I'm super proud of myself at this point. Feel like a hero to me. Woohoo. You know, I sure showed him, and I stopped that, what would be a nefarious dialogue, all right? I stopped it dead, and that's what you have to do. Don't engage with these people, all right? So he goes back to the office. I feel like a hero until that weekend. I'm taking weeds out from the front lawn, 
And what happens is my back goes up. <clears throat> I'm convinced that although this would have happened over time, uh, you know, whatever back issues I've had, they're going to be exacerbated by, you know, bad posture or whatever the case is. But I am convinced that the adrenaline that was in my system that day, at that moment, and it was heavy. This was fight or flight, and I was ready to fight, but I couldn't slap the guy in the head, right? Not very professional. Um, and I had to keep my cool, but I'm convinced that that is the beginning of what have been uh, chronic back problems. Is it worth it? Hell no. <laughs> the moment you feel mobbed, get out. If you can't get out, however, definitely stand tall and fight back. When it comes to the male mobbing situation, like I said, if it was just women, I think I would have been in a much better place right now. I'm not saying that I would have survived the mobbing unscathed and become a hero. They would have hated me and they would have likely, like they did, in addition with the men, attacked my work next. All right, because once you're in the midst of a mobbing, by the time you're at stage three, your goose is cooked because management is typically involved. So bottom line, get yourself out of the situation. If you're in a situation that you can't get yourself out of, perfect your debts there, stand tall, and don't show that they're getting to you. Do not cower to this behavior, all right? Just, and you know what? Network as much as possible. Uh, whether it be right knee, uh, you know what? Just find other resources, be they on YouTube, or maybe have some community resources. We have Jack here. We have absolutely nothing. That's why I'm doing these videos, all right? Uh, so we got that. And the last thing in closing, there's somebody who's been posting stuff about targeted individuals, and it's like really heavy. And it's stuff that I know very little about, um, and it gets to, yeah, it's, it's a lot. And it's a lot for me to read and absorb, and I'm very unfamiliar with it, and I'm not comfortable posting it, all right? So I invite the person who's been posting things that I'm not publishing to write me at foxyd at gmail.com. This way, at least we could talk and, you know, maybe see if there is some common ground between workplace mobbing and this higher level mobbing and that you're talking about. All right. So that's it for now. I'll be back with the toxic masculinity thing. As soon as these babies kick in, I wish you a great day. All right. Take care, my friend.